Hey, how's everyone doing? Just want to talk about my Wild Blow build, give you a little quick review. Um, you can use it if you want. And this is just my opinion about the build, and I'm just going to talk about it. So, we're going to go over the utilities real quick. What we use is Doyak Signet for that um, increased toughness. This is like uh, the only utility you won't use as often as the other ones um, because of the toughness. Usually you'll use it if you get real heavy CCs, especially from the Maul Trap from Dragon Hunter or the Skill 5 from um, Dragon Hunter's Bow. A little heavy CC. Otherwise, you would just use your um, Outrage, which uh, breaks stun or crowd control every 10 seconds. Um, and then we're going to go over Wild Blow. This skill hits very hard, especially if you're full Zerk. It uh, full... 100% crit chance, launches, and it knocks people back if it hits somebody. I usually hit about 5,000 damage, um, depending on what their toughness is. 5,000 is my highest I ever hit with this skill. Um, and I use headbutt, of course, with the wild blow. You want to either stun people. I use mace to stun lock them um, with shield bash or uh, skull crack. And then you would use wild blow to get that extra little hit off. This is also like a little movement skill, so when you use it, you move a little bit, so you can break just a little bit of the gap. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about the sigils next, and I use energy sigil for those clutch dodges, um, you know, if I need an extra dodge, and I use paralyzation for my shield bash, it, it gives you an extra 30% stun duration for shield bash, it makes it like 2.1 second or something, it's really good for um, keeping them locked down. Uh, with great sword, I use leeching and intelligence sigil. People might not agree with me on that because you're running Berserker Amulet and they're like, why are you running intelligence? But sometimes, you know, I don't hit my hardest when, you know, I use Rush or Blade Trail, so I make sure that's definite. Also, um, you know, I might be able to get off a headbutt when I swap to greatsword, and headbutt hits hard too. I, I hit at least another 5,000 with that, 6,000 if I'm lucky. So that's why I use um, intelligence sigil. I'm using leadership room because this build doesn't have any condi clears. So with leadership, it clears two conditions or, or converts them into boons whenever I use my elite, which is only every 20 seconds. But leadership only works every 45. So be mindful of that when you're using this build. Now we're going to go to specialization and we're going to talk about the skills or the traits that we use for this. So what I use is uh, Shield Master. Now with Shield Master, it's very effective for closing gaps and um, you know gaining might whenever you block an attack. Uh, I'm going to talk about Counter Blow real quick. When you're fighting a Mesmer, their greatsword skill it's considered a physical. So when you're trying to block a great sword attack from Mesmer, it's gonna um, negate this block. So usually, if you're fighting great sword Mesmer, I would use a shield stance to um, get in close to them. But otherwise, when you're fighting like Rangers or Revenants with hammer, you would use um, counter blow and block to get in close. Sadly, um, counter blow is not affected by shield master, of course. But it is affected by um, Sundering Mace, but we use um, Endure Pain for the clutch, uh, you know, last minute, if you're about to die, it pops for you. You could swap out, you know, um, Doyak Signet if you feel like, you know, you're getting hurt too much, but this is why I use Doyak. I use it for the extra toughness. And then you would use Rousing Resilience for your extra um, healing. Although, I do believe that this skill should have ICD of at least 5 seconds. Um, but yeah, it doesn't. So it's really good, especially when you're breaking stuns. So Rousing Resilience match with um, Savage Instinct. When you break stun, you know, going into Berserk, you gain that extra healing. When you use Outrage, you gain that extra healing. If you have to, when you're stunned, you use Doyak, you gain that extra healing. And also, when you use Headbutt, Headbutt is considered a brick stun too, so you can use that to get an extra healing. Um, going on to the next one, talk about discipline. 
where you sprint, you know, that extra movement, keeping close on people. Because with this build, you need to keep the pressure on them. So you need to keep up on them and, um, you know, make sure you're not immobilized. So you, you use um, either rush or a headbutt is a movement skill, as I said before. It breaks immobilization and you can use rush and whirlwind. Um, next is Spoilers Recovery. You could use um, Destruction of the Power if you want that extra little burst, but I use this Spoilers Recovery because you could get blinded constantly by a thief or have fumbled applied since you don't have any Condi clears other than Leadership um, 6. And um, yeah, that's your only Condi clear. So I use this just in case I have Fumble, Blinds, or Poison Upkeep. Poison Upkeep will affect your rousing resilience heal. Um, your next last skill I want to talk about is Burst Mastery. Now you want to use this because you want to stay in Berserk and deal your uh, primal burst and you know just to gain that extra adrenaline when you use your skills um, such as Arcing Slice or Skull Crack. You want to just keep that adrenaline up so you can go into Berserk uh, constantly because that's how you're going to deal your most damage going on to Berserk, I talked about it before, Savage Instinct, where you break stun, or uh, crowd control, you want to use that going into Berserk. Hopefully, um, this build doesn't really have a, a lot of adrenaline gain, other than when you use Counter Blow, you gain 6, so hopefully nobody hits you, or you're able to kite away in order to gain that extra 6 adrenaline, but, um, to go into Berserk, but when you're swapping weapons, um, you gain adrenaline too from versatile power. No, from um, versatile rage. My bad. You gain uh, adrenaline, so you constantly swapping weapons to keep your adrenaline up. Also, when you use headbutt, you gain max adrenaline. So that's another way you can go into um, berserk mode. So you headbutt somebody, savage instinct, break stun. You're gaining that um, that healing, that toughness. You're, you're staying in battle longer, and you're able to keep fighting. And the match with that toughness is that Doyak. So you, you got extra toughness, you got healing, and you, you just stand in, stand in close, keeping that pressure up. Um, next skill I talk about is Blood Reaction, which gives you, you know, um, gain ferocity based on the percentage of your precision. So when you're using Zerk Amulet, you're gaining at least, I would say, 230%. 230, maybe 235% um, ferocity when you go into Berserk. So you hit really and e extremely hard. Also, um, when you use Intelligence Sigil, going into Berserk mode and you use Arc, arc Divider, that that hits about 5,000. And if they lower than 75, I mean, if they lower than 50%, you do 75% more damage. So that at least does uh, about, I would say, well, my max that I've ever hit is 8,000, but I would say at least 6,000 or uh, 7,000. But if you're lucky, you would hit at 8,000, which I hit sometimes, not all the time. And then you would use Bloody Roar. Now, this skill is very effective when people are trying to run away from you or when you're trying to surprise them into your attack. And when you tr when you want to surprise them the most is to get off Wild Blow. So what I would do is use Headbutt, Savage Instinct, Break Stun, going into berserk mode and then I would use wild blow and that would hit at least like 5,000 6,000 damage um, using that because you get that extra damage boost when, you go, when you're in berserk mode and then you get that uh, that 100 percent crit chance and um, that fury you gain fury and quickness when you go into berserk so it's gonna hit off extremely fast um, Sometimes the skill can cancel if you move. So when you stun lock them, you want to use um, Wild Blow and not move. So we use that. Because you can't, this is not a movement skill. If you try to use Wild Blow and move, you will cancel the skill. And I think it will go in a full cooldown. So this is um, my little Wild Blow build. Hope you like it. Hope people use it. Because I feel as though Wild Blow doesn't get enough love as it should. And um, I'm going to be that first warrior to, you know, show people how it's done for real. Because I'm not the best warrior in the world, but I do believe I'm on pro level. And I'm going to show these other warriors and these other players playing Guild Wars how it's done.